Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Breaking right now, former MSU President Luana K. Simon has been ordered to stand trial, and that comes on the same day as a high-level departure is announced at the school. Paula. Also, supporters of the late Congressman John Conyers have a big ask and a break in protocol. They want him to lie in state at the, at the excuse me, the nation's capital. I will explain. All right, Paula, we're going to begin, though, with a heartbreaking tragedy in Gross Point. Two boys killed as a fire sweeps through their home. Topping our news today at 5, we're learning that fire trapped the two children upstairs, leaving them no way to get to safety. And by the time firefighters got there, it was just too late. This happened on Fisher and Beaupre, right on the Gross Point border with Gross Point Farms. Our Jason Colthorpe spent the day talking to neighbors who were absolutely devastated. Fire investigators still trying to figure out what exactly the cause was of this morning fire. But whatever it was, we know it was so intense that it trapped two brothers, one in the fourth grade, one in the fifth grade, in their house, and they couldn't escape. I was sound asleep and I hear all this breaking glass and screaming. The fire at the home on Fisher trapped the boys. One firefighter saying it looked like they couldn't get past either the flames or the heavy smoke, so they ran upstairs. It's believed the boys called their mother, who rushed back home but was unable to get inside. The neighbor across the street was emotional, trying to describe what he and his wife saw. Then I'm hearing yelling and screaming of mom, and I'm running out the door. And some guy broke open the windows, and these huge flames came roaring out. The kids were up in the bedroom above the garage, and they were trapped up there. You could hear the screaming. It was just terrible. Neighbors and even strangers rushed to the house trying to break in to get to the boys. Some guy in a pickup truck just stopped in the middle of the street, heard the screaming, and tried to, tried help, to help. Tried to help. The first responders were here within a minute or two. Yeah. They suited up, they went in, but I mean, there's nothing they could do. It was an intense fire. Investigators are looking at the kitchen as the possible origin of the fire. The boys hadn't left for school yet because it was a late start Monday at Richard Elementary. If it had been any other day, they would have been out the door and maybe it would have been a worse loss of a house, but yeah. not this. A lot of tears out here today and a lot of hugging with the neighbors, a lot of people who knew this family and knew these boys, their kids played soccer and played hockey with these boys and more than one saying to me that it's going to be tough for them trying to explain exactly what's happened to their friends. In Gross Point, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. And police are not releasing the boys' identities yet, and we do realize that an email did go out within some of the Gross Point schools using the boys' names. We will not release the names until tomorrow when police do out of respect for the family. Now to a judge deciding there is enough evidence for former Michigan State University President Luanna Simon to stand trial in connection to the Larry Nassar sexual abuse scandal. Simon is accused of lying to police investigating the former Michigan State University sports doctor. Simon apparently will be arraigned on four criminal charges that will happen in December. More now out of East Lansing as MSU trustee Nancy Schlichting announces her resignation. Former board member citing her frustration with the school's decision to not go forward with an independent review of the Nassar situation. More on both of those stories and their impact on MSU coming up tonight at 6. But our other top story here at 5, new information into a terrible crash that killed two people on Detroit's west side. It happened this morning at the busy Greenfield and Grand River intersection in northwest Detroit. Our Rod Maloney has an up-close look at what happened and how this could have been a lot worse. This is the intersection Greenfield and Grand River, and we can see just by what's left behind from this accident that these are people just living normal lives. Nail polish, contact lens solution, phone charger, crayons for children. These people were just going all about their business on a Monday morning when one person decided or maybe accidentally blew a red light, and now two people are dead. The Detroit Police Department fatal squad and accident reconstruction team members carefully and busily combed over the accident, and here's what they learned about this deadly crash. The red 2003 GMC Envoy sat on its side. The 2018 blue Nissan Sentra hollowed out and sitting upright. Two women, black females, one in her 30s, the other in her 50s, severely injured in the crash, rode in that Nissan. 
EMS crews whisked them to the hospital. Doctors declared them dead on arrival. They were traveling northbound on Grand River and didn't see the red envoy jumping the red light at Greenfield. It broadsided their car, pushing it onto the sidewalk. Detroit police say the 34-year-old driver of that SUV was at fault and is listed in critical condition at the hospital tonight. Meantime, he had three children in the vehicle with him aged 9, 4, and 3. They, too, were taken to the hospital, but they're listed in stable condition. The crash closed down one of Detroit's busier intersections for about four hours and forced traffic through a nearby mall parking lot during the investigation. When tow truck drivers went to pull the vehicles apart, we discovered the SUV was being propped up by that hollowed out Nissan. Now, the fatal squad being involved in this is uh, still looking into exactly what happened and who might have been in fault and, and what m the problems there with be. But we're told that because there are fatalities in this, uh, that this could very well lead to charges for the man who was in the hospital tonight. And so they are going to be uh, uh, looking into that and certainly will be staying on top of it to find out if, in fact, there is a case to be had. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Rod. Perfect weather. Had to wait apparently until we all came back to work on a Monday. Of course. <laughs> Not quite fair. You're right. An absolute perfect day outside with temperatures in the 60s. You can't even beat it with a stick if you had one. Let's get over to Andrew. He's in for Ben tonight with more. How long is it going to last, Andrew? Well, certainly as we go through the rest of the afternoon, this is the warmest day of the week with temperatures still in the 60s. We're at 65 degrees last hour. Temperatures gone down a couple of notches at 63. Still mostly clear out there and holding on to 65 for our friends in Flint. Neighbors over in Port Huron at 63 at the this hour. Absolutely spectacular as we look at downtown Detroit. Look at that beautiful fall color along the riverfront as well. In your neighborhood, beautiful trees, fall foliage is still out there. Make sure you can enjoy it if you can as we go out uh, throughout this evening. Temperatures stay in the low 60s for the next couple of hours, including during the Pistons game. Many folks coming to downtown Detroit for some NBA action. Temperatures will be in the 50s by the end of the game and still dry. We'll talk about whether we can keep this going for Tuesday and Halloween coming up. Okay, Andrew, he was the dean of the house, one of the founders of the Black Caucus and a leader for civil rights. List of accomplishments Congressman John Conyers achieved goes on and on. Today, a group of leaders is pushing for Conyers to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. The question is, is that going to happen? Paula Tutman live downtown tonight on the street that bears his name, Paula. Yeah, and you know what? Here's the thing. Of course, we all know with most things government and governmental, there is protocol. And what's being asked for is a break in that protocol. The revelations of Watergate make this vote inescapable upon us. The resume of service to the country, 59 years. John Conyers, a political giant, civil rights pioneer, elder statesman. The resume too long to list every accomplishment he achieved for others, though many will try. He fought for good jobs in health care through the health care bill that he put forth before there were health care bills being put forth. We've had disparities in the criminal justice experience, and Mr. Conyers took those types of issues on head on. We're grateful for the legacy that he has left here in the, this whole United States of America and abroad, right. the world, especially when it comes to human rights. And for his dedication and service to the nation as the longest sitting black congressman, a special honor is being asked that he be the second African-American to lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda. We are here to call on those who are in power. Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, we are asking from the bottom of our hearts that our congressman have his due and the opportunity to make one last trip to Washington, D.C as he lays in state. According to Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, House rules are that only a sitting member of Congress be allowed to lie in state. And while Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is the arbiter of those rules, there is a barometer. In fact, while the question came up for longest serving member of Congress John Dingell, his wife Congresswoman Debbie Dingell tells me she preferred to follow the Ted Kennedy model of driving past the Capitol on the plaza and leadership and membership coming out to pay their respects. Because Representative Conyers was no longer a sitting member of Congress, the question is, will Congress bend the rules? And so this is an important note. The family is not asking this. This is a campaign by uh, Congressman John Conyers supporters 
Uh, they say that they've just started reaching out, that they are doing this by letter, by phone call, and we are awaiting to find out whether or not there will be a change in protocol. Of course, there is more. Stay with us at 6 o'clock because we're also going to explore something very interesting, the complicated legacy of Congressman John Conyers. I think one of the, the most important things I heard today was uh, Hester Wheeler, uh, who said, should his life be gauged and judged under a microscope or through a fishbowl? And we're going to take a look at that coming up at 6. Okay, we'll talk to you then, Paula. Good we way of putting it, Hester. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Well, right now on ClickOnDetroit.com, we've got a look back at Conyers' legacy and reaction from local leaders. You can find the link right on our homepage. The UAW General Motors strike is over. Workers are back on the job. The focus for union negotiators, though, now turns to Ford. We learned the talks are underway at the main table. All local contracts have been settled. There are some big financial issues, though, that remain between the two sides. And ahead here at 6, why the experts believe a repeat of a lengthy strike is far less likely with Ford. And then also, what lies ahead for Chrysler? We'll look at that, too. Well, Defender Karen Drew is working on an exclusive investigation ahead at 530. Karen. A local father charged in his wife's murder by spiking her cereal with heroin. For the first time, hear what he had to say under oath. Had you talked with her about possibility of divorcing your wife? I think it came up. The couple's bankruptcy. Because we were well over our head. And the day before his wife was murdered. The defenders with the exclusive coming up. All right, Karen, also, what sent a car headlong into a bakery in Clinton Township? Jamie. Thousands of young people have converged on Detroit for the Forbes Under 30 Summit. Shh, don't tell anyone I'm not in that age bracket, but I will introduce you to some really impressive people next on Local 4.